there seems to be there seems to be some kind of cycle uh, operating which which perhaps we don't we don't fully understand um, and and I suppose the the alarming prospect and the one that that should focus our minds and that we should consider seriously uh, is that uh, is that this cyclical cataclysm spoken of in the ancient myths and in the traditions just might uh, return in our own time and uh, indeed there's much to to suggest that it does in 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 the work that uh, I did on uh, ancient Egypt uh, with my friend and, and co-author uh, Robert Boval, uh, looking at the mysteries of the pyramids, the Great Pyramid of Egypt and the Great Sphinx, one thing is, uh, is, is very clear. Now, again, we have been t- attacked uh, by the academics for putting this argument forward, but, but there's no doubt in my mind Robert Boval's Orion correlation theory is correct that the uh, Great Pyramids of Egypt are laid out on the ground in the pattern of the three stars of the belt of Orion. Uh, And because the positions of the stars in the sky change very, very slowly uh, down the ages, and because these changes can be simulated on computers, it's possible for us now to say exactly what period uh, is represented by the pattern of the pyramids on the ground. And that pyramid is roughly... Uh, 12 and a half to 13,000 years ago. Um, and at the same time, um, there are indications in the pyramids that point forward uh, to the future, again using the stars. Uh, at that time, the constellation, 12 and a half thousand years ago, the constellation of Orion was at its lowest point uh, above the horizon that it ever reaches in this great cycle of the heavens. And mm-hmm. today, it's at its highest point that it ever reaches and is about to sink down again. And there's a clear link being drawn between that time, 12 and a half thousand years ago, uh, and our own time today. Um, and, and it seems to me to be talking to us, to be telling us something, to be saying that we should learn the lessons of history, that we should be aware that, that uh, what struck our ancestors down may return to strike us again today. Okay, a couple of questions. One, you've probably had plenty of time to think about what, what could have triggered this cataclysm, and I'm sure you at least have guesses, right? Yes. Well, in fact, we can go, uh, we can go a little bit uh, further than uh, guesses. Um, okay. Because there's been there's been some startling uh, new information has has come out, and this information actually has come out from uh, mainstream academics, uh, not from uh, not from the historical alternative history fringe, as they as they like to call it. And and, <laughs> yeah. and this information concerns the collision of a gigantic comet with the Earth, uh, and that collision, uh, according to the latest evidence and information, took place. 12,900 years ago, which is exactly the time frame um, in, in, in which, to which all the evidence points that we lost uh, a great civilization. Uh, this comet it may have had a, a, a diameter of as much as 10 uh, kilometers, uh, six, six miles in diameter. That would do it. I, I've seen some specials on the subject, and it would engulf the world in flames. Uh, virtually the entire world would... Uh, would burst into flame. The whole uh, yeah. uh, gigantic firestorms would, uh, would, would, would have swept uh, the earth. Uh, the entire climate of the earth would have been, would have been changed uh, overnight. We can, we can understand why the ice sheets melted down so rapidly uh, at that time and poured their contents into the seas. Uh, and really, the evidence for this comet uh, striking the Earth um, is uh, is absolutely uh, compelling. Uh, the Carolina Bays uh, in the United States are very likely to have been created by fragments of this comet uh, impacting with the, the continental uh, United States. All right. Well, that absolutely makes sense. It's certainly possible. But it also goes on to beg the question, well, if it did happen and that comet did hit us, why should we expect another one to hit us? Well, see, um, the, 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 yeah, very good question and a, and a very good point. And this is, this is where you need to look at what happens to comets when they hit planets. And we had an excellent example from the comet uh, Shoemaker-Levy, uh, which uh, oh, yes. hit Jupiter back in 1995. Uh, it broke up uh, into 27 fragments. Uh, and those fragments hit uh, Jupiter like gigantic uh, machine gun bullets. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and as it happened, Jupiter swept all of them up, and none of them were left. In fact, by the way, Art, we should all be very thankful for the existence of Jupiter, uh, because orbiting out there in the distant reaches of the solar system, it catches most of the comets and, and incoming asteroids that might otherwise destroy the Earth. It's a- yeah, thank God, because it's my understanding any one of them would have uh, literally destroyed everything down to the bacteria on Earth. Absolutely, would have sterilized the Earth. If we'd been hit by Shoemaker-Levy, it would have been the end, absolute end of all life on this planet. We would have gone back to basic bacteria, uh, and perhaps we would have had to have waited another four billion years before intelligent beings uh, evolved again on this planet. Now, the issue I want to raise is that some of these gigantic objects do get through the the guardianship of Jupiter and do come into the inner solar system and do strike planets in the inner solar system. And, mm-hmm. and of course, this is pure speculation. Uh, but let's suppose uh, that we are dealing uh, with a comet that broke into multiple fragments uh, mm-hmm. and, and some of those fragments hit the Earth 12,900 years ago, but the rest of those fragments continued in their orbit, and we're talking about a long period comet here, not a comet that comes around every 100 or 150 years, but perhaps a comet that comes back around every 12 and a half thousand years. Mm. If that were the case, uh, then we could indeed be facing the return uh, of the remaining fragments uh, of that comet that hit the Earth 12 and a half thousand years ago. It- Graham, if, if such remnants came back around, how much warning? Uh, knowing whatever we know right now about uh, our ability to see these things coming our way, how much warning would Earth have? Possibly as little as three months. Possibly, possibly none at all, uh, depending on the direction uh, from which the comet approached. It's one of, the, one of the eerie and worrying facts of the study of near-Earth asteroids and, and, and comets that we're constantly discovering new ones. Uh, several of them have passed the Earth by extremely close and were not ever seen by our astronomers until after they had passed us by. That's, true. That's when we first noticed them. That's true. You see an article in the newspaper saying, Earth had a close call last Thursday. Yes. That kind of thing, yes. Exactly, that kind of thing. So, so uh, it's, it's very clear that this could happen again, and we might not be so fortunate. It might not be a close call. Uh, these objects might, uh, might, might hit our planet. And that's why I think, because with a long period comet, which last passed this way 12 and a half thousand years ago, um, we don't have any modern observations that allow us to plot the trajectory uh, of that uh, object. Um, all we have are the memories and the traditions and perhaps the warnings that have been passed down to us by ancient civilizations. And there's no doubt in my mind, very clearly ringing out like a bell, is a warning coming down to us from the past. And do you think one of those warnings was issued by the Mayans? Yes, I do. I think the uh, the, the, the Mayan calendar is extremely interesting uh, in this respect. Uh, and the Mayan calendar does, of course, contain a prophecy which could be interpreted as a prophecy literally of the end of the world uh, in, in our time, certainly of the end of civilization as we know it, and very specific dates. Uh, and the date the Maya put on it, in translated into our calendar, is the 21st of December, 2012. As, as of course, is, is very widely known. I think uh, I think many people in the world today are aware of this ancient warning and slightly spooked by it, and rightly concerned uh, by what it might mean. Now, it's it's not as simple as that. The, the the Mayan calendar and the ideas that lie behind it are extremely complicated. All right, and Graham, hold it right there. We're at a break point. When we get back, I'm going to ask how the Mayans might have known to pick that specific date, 20, 21 December 2012. How did they know? We'll be right back. 21, 21 is the day, December 21st, 2012. Can you imagine going out perhaps early in the morning on that date, looking up and seeing a large, fiery, tumbling thing headed straight at Earth? Can you imagine that? We'll ask why the Mayans picked that particular date in a moment. I've always baited myself about the end of the Mayan calendar, figuring a couple of Mayans were sitting around. One said to the other, I've had it with this calendar crap, that's it. And that's when they stopped. They just got sick of making calendars. I I don't know. But here we have a date, 21 December 2012. 
which could be uh, the end of all, perhaps. Uh, why that date? On what do you believe they might have based that, uh, Graham? Well, I'd like to pay tribute here to the work of John Major Jenkins. I know.